All right, let's see if I don't start some wild rambling intro yet again. Find a spot around the fireplace, you goons. It's time for another tale of Casual Master Quest. Hello, hi, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Casual Master Quest, where the sickest podcast, ep- or sorry, this is the sickest podcast episode we have ever made. And we're not sick. talking about, like, adjectives. Like, or, like, like, this is no, like, Tyler is, is sick. I, uh, uh, not sick as a dog anymore, but there was a point where I was. Like, uh, there was a couple of streams where it's just, I, I, I should have been IV at that point trying to fix all the, <laughs> that I couldn't swing my arm. And so it's like, it was, you know, this is episode 20. My name's Tyler Vitito. I'm going to be the host of this episode. Over in the corners, of course, I have Cam. How's it going, boss? Good. I didn't log it. <clears throat> Don't worry. Me too. Me I got too, man. stuck in my mouth. Cam, Cam just said puberty. <laughs> oh, what's it called? I had an almond stuck in my mouth. My bad. I ate right before this. Uh, ah. so yeah. I didn't log into Destiny 2 today, so that's how I'm doing. Oh, you did or you didn't? I didn't. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm mm. too busy. Oh, no. Oh, no. Soon. Don't worry. Soon, buddy. Of course, over in the other can- uh, corner, we have Nick. Nick, look alive. Eyes up, Guardian. Yes, sir. Uh, what if I told you I didn't touch Destiny 2 all week until yesterday? Liar. That I was yeah, <laughs> to say. You, well, mind you, I, I played I played some Iron Banana on Tuesday, but beyond that, I didn't do anything on Destiny 2 until Did yesterday. Did you say Iron Banana or Iron yeah. Banner? Yes. I'm banana. assuming that's, that's a meme. Okay. That's okay. a meme. Iron, Iron Banana. Banana and Lord Salad Bowl. Oh, also, all right. You know, I feel yeah. that. I, I just want to give appreciation that Cam kept himself muted due to like a life and death struggle with an almond. <laughs> like, he yeah, was. to unmute himself to call Nick a liar. For <laughs> That's dedication. That's we dedication. Did, um, throw too. I was like liar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I did like I did like a couple of the bounties when Iron Banana launched on Tuesday because I had some free time in the morning. But beyond that, I've been so busy with school that until yesterday, uh, I hadn't touched Destiny, and it felt strange. It felt it felt weird to be away from. It's like when you go on a trip, you know, and then mm. all you want to do is go home. Yeah. But you have to really be there, even though it's like three days. And I can't wait to play more Destiny tonight. Mm, yeah. Same here. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. Uh, let's <laughs> yeah. not talk about Destiny too much. I'm sure we'll get into the deets. Uh, let's talk about another game, and I believe this might be one of the last times we have to talk to this depth. So let's start the Pokemon Go Watch Proverbial Minute. We talk about our love for Pokemon Go and the stuff that we've done in exacerbation about this. You know, what what have we caught this week? What have we done this week? Have we caught up to any certain persons of uh, you know interest? Uh, The answer is probably not. Uh, I have some news. Ooh, Cam has news. Then go ahead, Cam. Take it away. I got a couple stories for you. So first off, Pokemon Go is actually super relevant in the news this week because the new Pokemon allegedly leaked through Pokemon Go. And I didn't realize that. What ended up happening was we saw this new Pokemon that looked like it had the body of a ditto with a bolt on its head. And everybody thought it might have been a placeholder, but it did have animations. Apparently, it came from Go network traffic. And funny enough, I woke up today to people in my local chat catching it because it actually showed up in the world and they were posting it around like three different people who are relatively trustworthy what? all saying like going up in the game and um that was corroborated online so it actually showed up pokemon go as catchable but all right so turned... we're 808 we're 808 pokemon in now let's yeah go. well it turned into a ditto or a chikorita so it couldn't be registered in the decks but it turned into a ditto or chikorita oh, okay. when they captured oh man people it. must but... be thrilled then for those stuck on the dittos jeez well i'm like i need to find one oh. But, uh, I, I need, need to find one. Get it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. But so uh, now I want to play. This Pokemon, <laughs> this mystery Pokemon has three X, or yeah, question marks for the name and uh, yep. for the CP. And uh, I guess the best way to describe it, it looks like the bottom half of a cast form or a gray ditto with the yep. top head of a golden nut with the black circle in the center. Yep, just a big old, like, nut. Big old bolt. And mm-hmm. so uh, we have no idea if that's supposed to be an actual Pokemon, which it suggests strongly that it would be. So yep. uh, something to look forward to. I think it might be like a legendary or something like that, or be uh, some random Pokemon. It doesn't look too impressive. Here's the thing is, I'm not a big fan of the design. Yesterday, we thought it might have been a placeholder, and there's still some credibility towards that. Uh, a lot of people have been disproving that by saying it has animations, but at the same time, I'm not entirely convinced because I think that having animations 
isn't saying it's not a placeholder because you would need placeholder animations to show an animation was displaying yeah, correctly, yeah. even if you were to put a uh, real Pokemon in the game. So mm -hmm. it could still be a placeholder, uh, especially the fact that it now showed up and then turned into a Ditto or a Chikorita once captured. I'm like, uh, you know, it definitely could be, but mm -hmm. it, it's weird regardless. It has a Pokedex number, I think of 891 or something like that. Oop, it was right. weird. It was weird. And, um, but uh, yeah. And you can also make the case, and I'm not gonna, I'm not about to start a huge debate. Uh, yeah. I'm just I'm Go just ahead, reiterating. Do it. I'm just reiterating some people's views on Generation 5 design Pokemon. Oh, yeah. But some of them weren't the most uh, creative. Mm -hmm. Some of them felt very lazy. Right. And this was just, uh, just was this this new Pokemon is even like, like it's re it set the bar super low because black really all they did was, yes, black and white. Okay. Black. All they did was I put like count. a little bolt on a Ditto body with yeah. like a little thing in, in between. And it felt like something, you know a five-year-old would have put together the thing that really messes me up is you can't it's not easy to tell the black dot in the middle is an eye so it looks like an eyeless pokemon and there yeah. aren't any of those we were going over it last night in my stream i was like there's not many eyeless pokemon they either have eyes closed or have a reason for not having eyes such as like zubat's case where it's kind of like okay echolocation but it's still a bat form this is just a bizarre two things put together i'm not a big fan of it but that's what's going on there also had personally i hit level 35 and I hit it unexpectedly because I hit it off of a friend bonus when I actually friended up with somebody and I was like tracking it and then just got 10,000 out of nowhere. Nice. They lay it. So I'm now level 35. I also was chasing down a Hitmonchan because Hitmonchan's the only Gen 1 Pokemon besides Mew I don't have now. Because with the event, funny enough, I remember last week I complained about the event. Turns out my first four eggs were Lowland Vulpix, Mr. Mime, Kangaskhan, Ooh. and Farfetch'd. Whoa! So, yeah, do you no, know? So do you know? Vulpix has like a like a three percent chance of dropping. Yeah, I hatched four of them in the past like four days. It's ridiculous. My, I don't know. What the heck kind of RNG is that? My God! And eggs and didn't get a single load in Vulpix. There's, it's a three percent chance of dropping. Cam. Yeah, I don't know. I it's just been ridiculous, and I got all of the region <laughs> in the first four eggs. I don't even have to worry about that. But um, still, I've never gotten a Hitmonchan. Hitmonchan is the only other Pokemon I've never right, ever right. found. And I saw one on my nearby scanner while I was out for a run at night oh, in the woods. And so I like straight, I ventured into the woods, phone shut off with mid battery. And I was like, oh no, no, not doing this. Not playing this game right now. No <laughs> this way. This is how you die. This is how I die. So I backed out of those woods. But, <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. that sucks, man. I was hunting it at night. See, in the woods see now mind you though, if it was, if it was anything related to a Vita, Cam yep. would have gone in. Oh, true. A hundred percent would have gone in if it was. If somebody had told me there was a PSTV lying in that forest, I would go in regardless. <laughs> I mean, look, if aliens are shutting off my phone, whatever, I'll deal with them. But I ain't dealing with that while I'm half out on a run with no music. I'm like, who? Not none of that for me, please. Please and thank but, you. But you know, if you're on a run without your and your phone's dead, you can listen to music off your Nintendo Switch. Oh, oh right. That, that's yeah. very oh, true. That I carry with me during my runs at all times. <laughs> that's one should. Uh, but that's me. That's me. <laughs> Um, Actually, Tyler, how's your uh, Pokemon Go week been? Uh, completely vacant. I don't think I've touched Pokemon Go this week. In fact, uh, it, it was so... Uh, I haven't touched... I mean, today would have been the day. I might get a chance later, but uh, I don't even know what the uh, difference is between me and uh, Cammon anymore. And uh, I realized that uh, it's futile at this point. Uh, one day I'll catch up. One day. <laughs> but uh, no, I have not played at all. I think I might have played some early in the week. As, you know, My usual, let's try hard to go you know, far in places. And then I was like... I don't want to give anybody gifts. This is too much. This like it's so much of a hassle. <laughs> but uh, I'll get back into it. I think the main reason is uh, for my wife's birthday last week. She uh, and I went for a trip uh, to catch Pokemon, which I believe I might have talked about. And she still has my Pokemon Go Plus, so I can't, you know, I can't do my drive around and do my usual thing. So it's not feasible anymore. So it's like, right, right. It, it stinks. What about you though, Nick? Um, I've just been getting to campus, catching the one Pokemon and spending the one Pokestop to keep my streak alive. Um, I don't know, nothing really much is happening. I'm not interested in the Chikorita Community Day event. Sure, it's in the EXP boost. That's what my roommate was trying to convince me to do, come out and do with him. That's but I'm like, I don't really, experience. I don't, I don't really care about that. Like, Pokemon Go has just been kind of like, oh, it's kind of fun to get out of the house. But, um, as we mentioned before, there's so, there've been so many Community Day events that it's kind of like, they're not really special at this point. And... Uh, like the last special one was Tyranidor, right? Mm, yep, uh, sure. Squirtle arguably was also pretty cool as well because you could get uh, glasses Squirtle, like Cool Boy Squirtle. So that was not, that was pretty cool too. But 
Beyond that, it was just kind of like, oh, these are just happening every other day now. There's nothing really special or exclusive about them. Chikorita is not that great battle-wise, as far as I know. Uh, even in even in the actual core games, Chikorita is not that great. I just don't care. Yeah. And also, Cam, I want to say that you are a genius for pulling this off. Triple experience Chikorita for three hours might have given me a chance to catch up to you. Uh-huh. But you did specifically request the podcast happen ah. right around this time. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> part of my plan. And that, not that's a brain explosion level. Uh, not at all. Deny him not the, the chat. State. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, anything else for Pokemon Go before we wrap it up or no? No, I just I missed not that much. Hitmonchan, um, but I wasn't going to get kidnapped by aliens. So. Yeah, I mean, that, them's the breaks. Yep. Don't want to get probed by Vita. Or do my you? My phone. My phone actually wouldn't restart. It was ridiculous. Like, I've never had that happen before. It's a newer phone, 50% battery, shuts down, tried to reboot it 10 times, did not work until I left that area. So I was like, Ooh, no, no you way. You think, like, EMP level stuff going on? It looked like it. Like it, oh, felt, man. like, it definitely was booting up, so it's not like it was fried or anything, but it could not get to the main menu. It would just, like, um, power cycle, basically, while I was there. Ooh. It was geez. weird. No, it was weird. That was rough. All right, let's uh, let's wrap up that then, and let's start talking about games that we've played besides Pokemon Go. Thank God. So, <laughs> Cam, we chose you first. Nick, what have you been playing this week? Um, so a little bit of uh, Bayonetta. Oh, really? No, not, a li- not actually, not a little bit of Bayonetta. I was thinking of Destiny Two. A little bit of Destiny Two this week so far. I've only put Just about um, you know eight hours, so not much. Uh, played some Overwatch and Bayonetta. I finally finished Bayonetta. You did. You um, beat it. I did beat Bayonetta. You you stayed up with me, or I stayed up with you while you watched me finish I Bayonetta. I stayed up with you. You, you played it. Uh, I, was, uh, I was the hang on. I, I was it, the nut tag. It, it is a game. Bayonetta is a game. It um, is. Tell I, us about it. How do you feel about Bayonetta? If you were to give it a review score between 1 and 15 bananas. 1 and 15 bananas? Iron bananas, yes. Um, about like a solid 12, 13 bananas. I had some fun wow, with it. Yeah, that's no, a I lot like, of iron bananas. That, like, that I is... really had a lot of fun with it, but it really got to the point at the end where it was just kind of like, when when are you just going to finish? Cause when is it like, going to wrap up? Because it felt like, like it should have The epilogue had an epilogue. Like, mm-hmm. how, how does that happen? Like, why should that happen? Like, I feel like there's a lot of things that either you don't tease me like that with the game being over, or you just put it in the next game. Right? <laughs> but then, mind you... It is that kind of game. It's a it's a very um, a whimsical, over the top kind of like. Uh, Jubileus did not want to be defeated by the likes of a credit scene. And, she transcended far beyond that. Thank you. And Tyler did his damn best to explain it to me, and I should have gone into like the wiki somewhere to like figure oh, out what exactly the happened. The concept as but, Bayonetta through Sega's but, Mine and Platinum and all that. But all I know is we have you a sexy librarian beating up angels, and that's enough for me. <laughs> that's at the end of the day that's enough for me and i can't wait for a kojima game because i feel like i'd understand that better <laughs> uh, yeah, <that's> <laughs> no <laughs> um, it stinks because i trash talk bayonetta so much at least in my head uh because honestly i did not like it i loved it for the first three hours but once i realized it, i'm leaving the podcast once <laughs> because of that right there Uh, (laughs) i love the first three hours but once i realized it was the same three hour rotation over and over and over again for up until i think uh the 15 hour mark i realized i gotten sick of it to where i was just doing the same motions over shooting uh you know or kicking the crap out of enemies doing the same kind of bosses. Occasionally we get a new boss that we'd see immediately turn into a normal enemy and then angel attack. And it's like, ah, yeah, no, like it, it had its, uh, fun moments. Some of the puzzle solving was great. Uh, some of the different bot boss fights were pretty interesting. My favorite one was the, was the water boss where you fight like the big tank guy in the ocean with like the six legs. Yeah. yeah, I really had, that was really fun. Yeah, that was really fun. Um, but it did get very repetitive. Like a game like that, um, like a game that doesn't get repetitive that does what Bayonetta does for me was the Devil May Cry reboot in the sense that it gives you um, new weapons it gives you new st- new styles of fighting new challenging enemies um, or like uh, look at the old school God of War series right you get new weapons you get more puzzle solving you get the, the, the enemies that they might be the same but they just beat the crap out of you like now they can one hit you right mm-hmm. so um, it did get really repetitive towards the end especially because it I think it peaked in difficulty in the middle 
or like the first few bosses like the second time you fight uh, Jean or like the first time you properly fight the two-headed dragon and then after that it just sort of got really um really simple because Jean fighting Jean after that like the the Your penultimate third eye time, opens. Yeah, the penultimate time I fought her it was really like I died maybe twice or three times and then eventually I was just like, "Uh, oh, you know what? I can take you on now." And then the, like the final time you fight her it's like <laughs> my power levels have peaked. You know, uh, this is my final Counterpoint yeah. to both of you, uh, I would say that as a stylish action game, uh, De- Bayonetta, much like Devil May Cry, as you said, uh, is more about, you're, you're basically, I think it's looking at it, not wrong, but it's looking at it not fully if what you're talking about is like, I'm evaluating it because it got repetitive, when the only got reason it got repetitive is because you fell into the the combos that you use, the combos that you That's decide true. to use. That's true. Because yeah. the system itself is meant to be very big. The point of all stylish action games is meant to master the system. So much like early Devil May Cry, much like the reboot to some extent, but once you master that system, you can get really ridiculous and the fun is in mastering that, trying out new combinations, switching on the fly and doing all that sort of stuff. Uh, so Bayonetta is one of those games, I feel. So just playing it through um, to experience the story and that sort of thing isn't what it's meant for necessarily. Right. Yeah, I can I can definitely see uh, understand that point because I didn't even get that far into the combo system or, uh, you know, I just sort of flew through everything. I didn't buy all the, the yeah. new combos or things that I could learn. Oh, um, really? Yeah, no, I didn't buy all of them. I bought a few of them that I really felt were fun to use. I wanted to buy one, but I couldn't pull it off because there is there is a quite quite a bit of skill involved in oh, pulling yeah. up a lot of different combinations. And I could appreciate anybody who could do that properly back to back and just chain everything. Um, because I got consistently, except for maybe four awards, all of my awards were stone awards. Mm-hmm. So you get awards at the end of each level or at the end of each chapter. And because I was just sort of like just playing it through for the story and just having a good time with it. So yeah, I, I understand that point. Yeah. Now, mind I, you, I'm not talking from a place of experience personally because I'm right with you there in terms of the level of difficulty I played it at. But I I know how the systems work more so from watching gameplay of them and saying, oh, wow, you can do this ridiculous stuff if you have these crazy inputs. But again, I'm not a big input heavy guy. So that's not something I can pull off or I'm interested in pulling off. But that is what the appeal of the series is to other people, I okay. would say. Yeah, I do but realize <laughs> that uh, this game in particular, because the first time I gave it a full on shot, like to completion was when I got it in conjunction with Bayonetta 2 for the Switch. And uh, when I played it and when I finished it, I was kind of upset, but at the same time, I was more or less uh, divisive. Like, this is the first game where I had a good time, but there were so many moments that just broke me angry about it that I didn't know if I liked it or not. You know, to the point that I went to bed at 10 o'clock at night. You know, the wife and I usually have our, you know, end of the day talks and all that stuff. And I gave her a five oh five thousand word review about what I liked and didn't like <laughs> about Bayonetta until I heard her start snoring. <laughs> and then you know the next morning it's like, did I like that game? And it's like a lot of it, yeah, because there's a lot of cool you know stuff about it. But it's like it was there parts of yeah, of course there was stuff that upset me. And then when I played Bayonetta, uh, Bayonetta two, it felt like most of that disappeared. Like if you like Bayonetta one, it, even like 50-50, Bayonetta two, you're gonna absolutely love. And I one hundred percent recommend you find a way to get that. Uh, since you're getting a Switch soon, that'll be up in the cards. Yeah. Or if you want to attempt a Wii U emulator, cough. Uh, that's another. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Yes. Not real. I've heard of the emulator. I've never heard of the actual console. Like it never yeah, made it out, unfortunately. But you know, they at least they had a skeleton of that. In so. My <laughs> Let's see. Cam, what have you been playing, boss? Uh, just the usual stuff, really. Destiny, Pixelmon, all that good stuff. Pixelmon, I don't know if I've shielded enough on here. It's one of the more optimal ways to play Pokemon, I feel, in terms of experiencing what the, the feeling that Pokemon is trying to convey early on in that it's adventure, it's mystery. You know, all the Pokemon through Gen 6 are in the game. They're all tagged to different biomes. You could just be, you know, roaming around in Minecraft in a Boreal forest, run across like a very rare one where it's like, whoa, or like have a legendary spawn in front of you. You know, I've been running around in woods, have flocks of crowbat flying overhead. It's just the the most mystery adventure Pokemon world related activity you can do um, besides the core games that really get you in that mindset. So I can't recommend it further. Uh, besides that, I also played Senran Kagura Reflections, which I mean, Ooh. pretty big game, pretty big game. Let's not, let's yeah. not, you know, get me wrong. Very important. Uh, Spider-Man, nobody cares about that really. But okay. Senran Kagura Reflections, on the other hand, wonderful. And, and it's all about... You see, girls, the girls in Seven Kagura when they're when they're working out, when they're being ninja, when they're you know working. How do you know they're girls? Like uh, they don't show anything that would suggest otherwise, right? No, that yep, you know, 
you just oh, know. Okay. You know. Just, just making sure. Oh, you know for sure. Uh, so they uh, while, while they're going through that, right, they incur injuries and they maybe get a little sore from all that working out. And uh, sometimes you need to massage them to alleviate their tension. So Severn Cogger Reflections is all about doing that. And it is definitely wholesome and not at all lewd or a hentai game. Of course not. No. On Switch for $10 with motion controls and um, HD rumble simulating slapping thighs. Anyway, that's Severn Cogger Reflections and a very extensive review on that. Thank you very much. And that's what I played. That sounds like the uh, the worst case scenario. The people that want, or I guess the executives at Nintendo that wanted to get rid of the head padding in the Fire Emblem game. <laughs> this is probably like that. Their trumped up version that they were afraid of. And That is, I think, specifically Nintendo Treehouse's fault, which are the English localization team slash, yeah. yeah. So I think that was their fault entirely. But Saren Kagra, on the other hand, uh, the director is known for making certain comments. And he felt that with HD Rumble, with the advent of HD Rumble, the first thing he needs to do is make a tech demo where everything feels realistic. And we'll say it that way. Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> first it, thought I yeah. If I laugh, I'll end up into a heaving, coughing fit. So <laughs> I laugh with you silently. You're a humble and proud people. Uh, wholesome, yeah. wholesome race, yes. Wholesome. <laughs> Let's see. On my Persona 4 front, I'm very disappointed the report that today's the last day I can sell the Vita to GameStop for $100. Don't. And so I uh, I believe they closed uh, for me in like an hour. Good. Uh, hour and a half. I, yeah, <laughs> if, I, if I run now, I can make it. I won't let I, you. I, I joked theoretically that if I beat Persona 4 Golden by then, then I could uh, cash it in because I'll never use it ever again. Because uh, I can't find any other use for it unless you'll Cam... all thank me. You'll all thank me for holding on to your Vita someday. One day, I'm sure one day. Of it. When it's three hundred, four hundred dollars, because nobody bought one, and it's super artificial scare. Well, not artificial scarcity, but when it's a rare retro console, uh, you'll all thank me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm afraid to see how much a Wii U gamepad would cost nowadays. Probably something out there. Now. Because right now we're still in, they're available and stores are trying to offload them. But once you get like in the 10, 15 years down the line, that's when it gets dangerous. What kind of also, store sells a Wii U still? I have not seen any. Couple. You can still get them at GameStop pre owned. I can. Like so I just went on really? Craigslist and I can get a Borderlands 2 PS Vita edition uh, with all the accessories mm -hmm. for 180 Canadian dollars. So yep. about 140 USD. Yep. But I'm just saying, man, wait on that because I'll give many good examples of consoles that didn't sell very well, that had to, like low sales in the U.S. and are now extremely expensive and I even retain their value, I should say, because consoles go down. But, you know, the Jaguar being one of them, right? Atari's Jaguar sold under one million hard and now they're like $300 because guess what? Nobody had a Jaguar. Nobody bought one. People are looking for them when they're collectors. So consider all I'm saying is consider future where kids grew up not with Nintendo, but with PlayStation, that future we're coming to this PlayStation nostalgia and nobody uh bought that interesting console called the vita or the pstv and those are going to be two or three hundred four hundred dollars you know, cam's cam's just going to be if we you know what mm -hmm. you know what cam actually has like a warehouse filled with vitas it's true. we just don't know about it and this is all part of his master plan it's all like part of my six plan. years from now he's just going to be sitting on top of like a giant empire that he bought he bought he buys out sony that's what's going to happen yep, i'm going to buy so out cam sony. is going to buy out sony because he sold all of these vitas and he made so much money for he's got like at least 600 so six <laughs> 600 times at least like a thousand be enough. because it's Definitely gonna get enough. yeah it's you know that's what's gonna happen I will make a future where the vita 2 exists single-handedly <laughs> speaking so, of the vita guys can i just say real quick that we're not going to really talk about it because it's not in the news story but the uh it just got announced the vita's ending japanese production in 2019 which means the oh vita is shoot officially dead it is officially actually dead so and persona 4 golden <laughs> i'm gonna cry about that later but yeah uh i have beaten the game yeah nice really I, let me rephrase that i've beaten the persona 4 portion of the game yeah okay i've not beaten the golden portion aka the true ending no well. i have apprehended adachi i defeated uh i think it's amino sagiri something like that yep, yep. uh evil looking giant eyeball thing yep. and uh blew him out of the water and so i've completed that i've gotten that i'm currently in the spring section where i you know i gotta wrap everything up uh and then afterwards i'm gotta you know come back and say something doesn't feel quite right there's i think there's a a very mythological mythological creature around here that might have been messing with me thanks to this addition of the golden version did you say you're in the spring session i'm in spring right now yes i'm pretty sure that happens during winter well yeah, i mean sure uh, that was january february that the golden stuff happens because you're at a did you go on the ski trip no oh uh right now i uh, i think i'm like 28th or 29th like 
I guess I shouldn't say I've beaten the game because there's apparently a whole lot more after you defeat. Like right now, I'm at the point where I've completed Christmas and all that. So yeah, what month are you in though? Because I'm uh, spring. I'm thinking end game. End of uh, December. Oh, okay. You're yeah. All right, not spring. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Well, I, I was told <laughs> out there due to multiple guides, you know, all two of them uh, of that cover the uh, golden <laughs> that like the uh, main events you'll leave for after spring and then come back during the summer, like June or something like that, and uh, you'll walk around like one last time and. You'll talk with everybody and then something that seems yeah. off that's the very very end but the the last dungeon the the thing you're doing basically the the marie tie and the golden tie and it happens during the winter okay yeah. all right oh boy i can't wait mm-hmm. oh, oh man so that's my persona front uh hopefully by the uh next podcast actually i know by the next pod, uh episode uh, i'll have that done wrapped it up and vita can finally go to the rest so Bless that. Skyward Sword, I streamed yesterday, played a bunch of Skyward Sword. I had defeated Girahim for the second time over at the Fire Sanctuary to the point that I had swung the nunchuck so hard that I destroyed him. I uh, bought a two-pack of nunchucks from uh, Chinese manufacturers, and the first one died within half an hour, and the second one died yesterday. So uh, I've decided, and I ordered it from uh, Nintendo this time through Amazon. It said, they say they're Nintendo. We'll see if that's true. But How it's much did it cost you? Uh, it's twenty dollars for this nunchuck. Oh, it's not too bad. I mean, it, it's you know, true the blue. It says it's uh, directly for the Wii. It's licensed by Nintendo at the very least. So maybe not by Nintendo, like distributed, but it's yeah, a made Nintendo at this product, point so. because it's a Nintendo. Uh, well, Nintendo what Wii? Yeah. Uh, yes. I think they still sell one. I think they still sell them at GameStop, and also I know Nintendo still sells them because they they keep we they're going to keep we support for quite a bit considering how many are out there. Oh yeah, and I know if I really really wanted to, I could have gone to Walmart. I believe Nyko has like a, a clear see through version of it, but it's like I want actually a Nintendo nunchuck because I had spent a solid twenty minutes trying to catch not twenty minutes about ten minutes trying to catch two birds to uh, upgrade my shield. The problem is, though, with that nunchuck that I had, this third-party nunchuck, it, it, like I had the stealth towards these birds to swing the net. And this nunchuck had don't move at all or full frontal speed. <laughs> yeah. So I like move an, uh, a millimeter. And it's like, Link, please move. And then move another meter. And then he would move slowly. Like, yes. And then he'd stop. I'm like, okay. Another millimeter, full torpedo speed and just launch her into those birds and just scare them off and it was just frustrating and i was like if i had a real nunchuck this wouldn't be a problem let's see if that's true uh it's gonna come on wednesday though so i'm not gonna be playing scabbard sword for the uh, next stream i'll probably play something different we'll see what happens i might have to play some destiny no no. Speaking of Destiny, I've also been playing some Destiny. Boys, this is where we uh, reveal our virtual EP number. Let's uh, <laughs> let's let's start from bottom right. up. Uh, uh, um, so, Nick, considering Nick. where you were last week and now this week, how much progress did you make now that you know exactly what to do? A uh, huge amount. Yeah, uh, okay. ridiculous amount. Like I'm, I'm really pre- happy for you because now we've gotten that confusion out of the way. Right. Uh I'm obviously going to be the lowest because I was a dummy, for lack of a better term. I'm at 525. Yeah. Uh, second so, person I know is Cam. So Zuma. funny enough, I actually, I just hit 530, but what I will say is I looked at Tyler's light and felt cheated because I did everything in the first week and got terrible rolls because so, I, I did not get what I was supposed to get. <laughs> so um, uh, that's a uh, bad RNG. And also yeah. after the first raid clear, um, which happened... Um, 18 hours after the raid dropped last week, um, it, it no fantastic effort by them. There are three groups that finished it. The first three groups. So, uh, so before we go into like the the stuff, it changed in game. Uh, the raid dropped uh, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time Friday last week. Um, first group that cleared it were there. Uh, did it in 18 hours or so. The next group did it in about I think 20 hours, uh, like shortly after them. Then the third group did it in 24 hours and two minutes. Ooh. Now Bungie were offering an exclusive emblem for completing it within the first 24 hours. The guys that got it two minutes after the 24 hour mark, there was a glitch or something happened that put them off by about three minutes. Oh. So they were so close. Yeah. And this was Dado and his team, and they are. They've done so much for the, the Destiny community, and everybody's heartbroken for them. But by far, the fa- most fantastic raid experience that um, 
uh, Bungie's ever put out. And the final boss has already been uh, two men. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Really? Or four oh. men. Oh. Or some uh, points could have been two men. Man, let's double the firepower. Pick one. I can't remember. Um, I I can tell you for sure that the final boss has been four men. Okay. Um, so people have already been uh, f- doing the good old Destiny things. Yeah. And um, so I've once they beat the boss. Boss as well, I think. Mm-hmm. Once they beat the boss, it changed things in the game for everybody. Yeah, so there's new cool. strikes, new missions available that are changing weekly. The Dreaming City, which is one of the new destinations, is changing weekly. And so, along with uh, beating the raid, uh, and this is a smart, this is smart game design. It's now opened up more avenues for people to level up and gain powerful gear, so that people can catch up quick. Mm-hmm. So that's why, uh, that's part of the reason also why uh, Tyler, you were able to catch up so quick to uh, get up. Right, to it wasn't my hard work or anything. No, I mean it was your hard work, but there are now more avenues more sources of yeah. getting uh, powerful gear yeah because so, there's only to help speed up the process there's only so much like so many bounties you can get for powerful gear and if we both did all of them and so what i was looking back is like man at the end of my first week i was 517 or 520 or something like that and i was like oh i got jilted super hard <laughs> i mean in my defense i had not touched the uh, dreaming city in terms of the uh, weeklies because i couldn't do it now, granted, the one weekly I did get to do was in conjunction with camp, doing the uh, week two Ascendant Challenge. I still haven't gotten anything done uh, for the weeklies uh, this week or last week beyond that. So everything I got huh. gear-wise was from the dailies and weeklies you know, that you <laughs> see from the directory, as you suggested. I'm at 530 with half my weeklies done. <laughs> Oh no, you're gonna pass me somehow. Well, no, if I'm all like 100% caught up right now in terms of that, besides the Dreaming Cities, so yeah. there's, unless I get exotic Ingrams, or, you know, not exotic, but prime Ingrams uh, dropping left and right here from continuing playing, I don't see any way of me catching up to you unless oh, I. Uh, I thought you said you've done none of your weeklies. Just... No, I've done all of them. Okay, okay. I mean, I got bounties and some, uh, you know, I can do the tough bounties like for the iron banana ones I could do, but there's no way I'm going to get that at my level because unlike Crucible, Iron uh, Banner uh, does not, you know, power scale you. It's uh, you come as you are. So, yeah. you know, Mr. 518 that tried it versus the, you know, level 560s that just. Yep, yep. Way, it's like I was a noob. But, yeah, all uh, my uh, all my crucible weapons are lower, so I was playing Iron Banana at 520. So it was a bit of a tr- uh, struggle for me too. Well, speaking of numbers, I'm at 525. Cam said I'm majestic 530. Nick, hi. What are you at, buddy? Um, I believe I hit 544 or 546 last week Ooh. as my max. Ooh. Yeah, and Ooh. I've, mind you, I've not been playing much except for the first two weeks, so it's not. It's not difficult, really. 546. 546.3 is the yeah, exact it's not number. Difficult. You just got to get good and play. <laughs> you just got to, yeah. Because I'm feeling, oh, I'm sitting over here feeling like, is it not just RNG as well be- with the rolls themselves? Because, like, I know there is the bug still where some things will drop below your current equipped stuff. Which I yes. Saw. So um, some of them, uh, they're different tiers for the drops, and some of them drop just the one light level above your yeah. actual your most, most and so mine. when you get shafted on those drops like i've been getting weapons uh f- for the longest time for the last uh, yesterday uh all my weapons are at 542 yep. all the prime and gra- not the prime engrams all the powerful gear that i've been dropping that were weapons were all 542 because my highest combination was 541 yep. so because my weapons were the highest at 542 yep. i was getting 542 weapons yeah i was having that i keep on getting helmets and titan marks and mm-hmm. they're usually when they do upgrade they're just one above and yeah. yeah one or two above uh, yeah so so it's like the powerful stuff like the daily powerful gear will not give you a big increase but it's the weekly so if you're yeah. done with them you're kind of like well now it's kind of the slow grind the slow burn so because i had everything to do like yesterday and i did all my weeklies yesterday i went up from 541 to 546 yeah Cool. Um, awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else we want to talk about with Destiny Two? I'm all set. No, it's, it's, I'm, it's I'm pretty all set. Oh, actually, I have something I want to talk about with Destiny Two. Hey, hey Tyler, are you free tonight? <laughs> Don't tell me you you haven't done it yet. Uh, the Ascended Challenge? No. Uh, I also, I, I need to do a couple other things too that I I could use backup on. Not backup, it, but I I need to do the um. You need a strikes. warm body so you can actually do it while I uh, distract them. Yeah, I also need to do the strikes with somebody with the same subclass, and I can't guarantee that online. I only want to do three strikes. So, uh, like, uh, with these strikes in particular, uh, I think they force it to everybody has to play as solar. So, oh, really? No. Oh, no. So I just got lucky when I did that with randos. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, no, no. Actually, no, you did not get lucky because I believe, uh, uh, did you do them yesterday? 
uh, sure. Uh, because um, uh, it's been solar singe, so yes. it would make sense oh, why oh, I'm using oh, solar subclasses. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, but me, be... because I like playing Nova Warp, I would go into a void subclass in a solar uh, solar burn. So yeah. Oh, I uh, just mentioned I did actually get my second seed uh, finally for the subclasses. Nice, so, nice, yeah. nice. Uh, tier two or tier three, Blindwell? Tier three. Tier three. Yeah. So tier three is guaranteed. Tier two, there's a chance. And yeah. me and my uh, friend got really lucky, and we got it of our first completion of a tier two. Nice. I think I've yeah. done tier two ten times, and I didn't get one then. So right. yeah, right now I'm trying to farm. Like someone told me, or a guide is like, you can actually buy the tin shear of the queen. I'm like, the heck? Yeah. Oh, I'd have yeah. to look to see where it is. Like, what's the cost it's, for that? Um, it's a it's a secret vendor. It's um huge like oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah, and uh, I think it costs. 50 no it's 25 or 50 barren bows i think yeah Ooh, yeah oh, i mean i don't know how many of those i have but uh like i i was just doing random events to see if i could get one to drop so uh yeah i'll, I'll be down for that we can cool. check yeah in. much later tonight because i gotta go do something but after that i need to do the ascendant challenge did you do it yet just a heads up me no i know what it is it's okay. a Apparently, it's uh, jumping a bunch of platforms while dodging sniper fire and then fighting yep. the boss at the top. That's There's only about two or three snipers. That's not the hard yeah. part. I went into it solo, but fortunately, because of my high light level, I was able to do it, I think, on the third try mm -hmm. uh, because I did get booped off quite a few times. Yep. But, uh, it's it's a fight. It's the fight that got me. The platforming, I was able to figure out and handle. I know an optimal path now. I'm all set with that. But the oh, boss... you've tried it. Oh, yeah, I tried a bunch. But I got to the boss, and he was just too high for... Like, I was doing damage, but he would one-hit me, or two-hit me. And so it was just too tough to try and whittle that down and then have to platform every time to get back there. Ooh, okay. Well, I will yep. try to farm up a couple of tinctures, and then we can uh, give that a shot then. Sounds good. All right. Then, if that's the case, we're done talking about our the video games we've been playing. That means we're on to what could easily be one of our final sections of this uh, this uh, particular little moment here. Well, I haven't memorialized the video yet, so we do have that as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we do have the next part, which uh, for those who uh, have figured out, it is the Nick Switch Initiative, where we have uh, Cam as the quizzer and Nick as the usual quizzee. And myself as uh, some sort of uh, elusive backup, which usually doesn't work out ever when it comes to <laughs> Cam quizzing, because uh, let's be real here. So, Cam, take it away. Tell me about it. What's going on here? All right. So this week we're going to be doing Pokemon spinoff games. And funny enough, I actually Oof. didn't even send the Wikipedia article until yesterday, and I didn't end up sending one at all. Instead, I sent him a list of spinoff games and told him I'd go easy on him. A so, list. Yep. Yeah, funny enough, though, some of the spinoff games weren't on that list, which is a little bizarre. So I added those as well uh, and told Nick about that. But I'm not too bad. This is an, not an easier quiz, but I you know, kept in mind with the fact that I'm, you're not going to have to look at 30 different Wikipedia pages and kept it to the overall series. And maybe a quick cursory, cursory glance at the, each page would help you out here. I also do have a couple bonus questions if you want to get harder, because I personally felt like it might be too easy. But okay. with that all being said, you have two assists from Tyler and I can start whenever you are ready. I am ready. Whatever happens, happens, right? Yep, whatever happens, happens. Let's do it. So, first right one is going to be a true or false. So, true or false, the Pokemon trading card game for Game Boy has a sequel that was only released in Japan. True or false? And uh, my glasses are flashing wildly for this, uh, but uh, I'll let you guys uh, decide that. Um, so, the, the sequel to the Pokemon trading card game that came for the Game Boy has a sequel that only released in Japan. True or false, yes? Yes, That's true or false. Um, I have no idea. I'm going to say true okay. because it's 50-50. Is that your final answer? Yes, sir. You got it. <laughs> Absolutely right. <laughs> the only reason why I know is because Cam played it. I was playing it on My Pokemon <laughs> card game to <laughs> die Rocket Sanjo. <laughs> I mean, All it right. did technically come out over here with a fan translation. Yeah, I guess. Well, it didn't it release in retail. So. That's true. That's true. All right, Nick. Next up. What is the most recent Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game? Um, uh, Pokemon, uh, was it Ultimate or Super? It was Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Super. All right, is that your final answer? Yes. Say my lenses remain translucent at this point. There's no flashing here. No flashing at all? No. Um, I'm going to give that to you, I think, because it's called Super Mystery Dungeon, and you said Mystery Dungeon Super. So I think I think it's fair. I'll give that one to you. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll yeah, see. yeah. I'll, I'll give you point nine yeah. points. Yeah. Point nine. Point nine. There. Maybe maybe point five. Point nine. You might have to work for it later. Okay. Uh, okay. Next up, Nick. Pokemon Channel was released. Sorry, Pokemon Channel was released on which system? Did you just try doing that with the Japanese accent? No, I actually. It was released for what? 
I, I slurred um, a little bit because re released on which got me into released. No, it's okay. I, I'm terrible <laughs> at English, so I, I have no place trying to criticize you. Can you repeat the question for my sake, though? Sure. <laughs> Pokemon Channel was released on which system? And just to give you some hints here, Pokemon Channel is the sequel to Hey You Pikachu, which released on the Nintendo 64. Okay. So I think we talked about this last week. I talked about I remember this. You talked about this last <laughs> week, which I'll is listen. why I went and looked it up, because I'd never heard of them. Cool. But I'm, I'm cool. kind of sure that the Pokemon Channel came out on the GameCube. All right. Is that your final answer? Yes. Easy win for you, Nick. That's three right there. Let's keep going. Let's, nice. let's keep it going. Keep, going. keep it going. Right. Pop I have, music. So, funny enough, I have like nine questions. Just cause. Okay, yeah, okay, fine. Oh, um, wow, let's get it. Next up, <laughs> next up, the Mystery Dungeon series debuted on which Nintendo, Nintendo, woo, Nintendo handheld. Now, there is a, there. there's a somewhat trick to this question, so I'm asking you, the Mystery Dungeon series debuted on which Nintendo handheld, the earliest Nintendo handheld it debuted on, the so, oldest okay. Nintendo handheld it debuted on. Theoretically... Debuted. You might be referencing maybe Japan versus American release, or not that necessarily, but okay. There is something else which I'll clarify if he gets it or not. So, okay. I'm just asking you, which handheld did it debut on? Uh, the original DS. I'm just gonna go with that. All right. Final answer. Yes, sir. That is incorrect, but also semi-correct. So here's the problem. I did specify oldest because it released simultaneously on the DS and Game Boy Advance with two separate versions. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I that's mean, if it was simultaneously, wouldn't wasn't he well, at least? That's why I specified. Older. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's a. Uh, oh, okay, so. Yeah, but, yeah. Okay, oh, that's fair. That's yep, fair. Yep, yep. That's okay. You're pretty much. These are all for funsies now because yeah, you already yeah. got it. Uh, next up in the Rumble series, Pokemon are represented by what? Wait, oh, what? I... Pokemon are not Pokemon in the Rumble series. They're represented by what? So they're not creatures. They're something else. I have no, WWE no. wrestling champion. The <laughs> no. All right. It looks like no answer here. So the answer is toys, figurines. Uh, I was going to say candy. Jeez. Candy. Well, uh, no, close, close. All right. So I have three, three more here. These are okay. very difficult. And okay. uh, you guys can tag team these if you want to just for fun. Okay. Yeah. All right. You, this one, I hope you know. Uh, what Pokemon spinoff is a crossover with the Nobunaga's Ambition series? Ah, uh, uh, as as uh, Tyler or or Cam have said so in the in in the previous uh, quizzes, glasses flashing wildly, and I push them up further up my nose. You activated uh, my trap card. Pokemon Conquest. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, nice. it is. All right, all right. Look right through your cards, Yuki boy. <laughs> Next up, <laughs> name the three regions the Ranger series take place in. Um, I can tell you one of them is Fior. For okay. sure. You got one. Um, Alma? Almia. Yeah, I'll take it. Sure. Okay. Um, and something with an O, I yes. want to say. You're there. Um, Oran? Like, okay. Not Oran. Oran. No, so you I, think you, I think you're thinking Ore from Coliseum. Um, you're getting there too, but Oblivia. Oblivia. Oh. Okay. Oblivia. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. All right, final question. Who develops the Mystery Dungeon series? What company develops the Mystery Dungeon series? Huh. The answer is not Nintendo. Just, just so. Uh, I, oh, oh really? God. <laughs> I, I would never have guessed. Um, I mean, they just worked on Chocobo Mystery Dungeon. I thought they were pro Nintendo, but no, <laughs> darn. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have no idea. Tyler, do you have any idea? Me? Oh, not a clue. I've not touched the <laughs> game in my life. I had no idea. If I had to take a wild guess, I would have said Square Enix because they're working with Chocobo. But <laughs> uh, Mystery Dungeon has actually been a long-running series beyond just Pokemon or Chocobo, cr Chocobo crossovers. Um, but the answer is Spike Chunsoft for oh, Pokemon okay. Mystery Dungeon. That's all right. That's all I got. I just had a bunch of questions for you. Good there job. You, there I you mean, go, Nick. Good job. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Oh, my God. Yeah. You do it. You're a winner. A winner is you. Yeah. Oh, you sound so enthused right now. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of. It was kind of okay. Yeah, it was okay. I can make okay. it harder if you want. <laughs> That's what she said. A. Hey. <laughs> um, I'll say no. You can't. <laughs> uh, to, to the, okay. Never mind. Oh, I can't. Can I? No, Are you not sure about you. that. Yeah. No, I, I just meant. Uh, you know, that's what she said. But yeah. I realized I'm going down a terrible rabbit hole. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that is that. I believe that would put you at what were you at? Two hundred and fifteen? Two hundred and nineteen? I don't something remember. Like I can't count through the bottle. I can play the guess how much. Two thirty-five? Like oh, something like that. So we're well, either we're either between two thirty-five and two fifty-five. I think it's a little earlier. I think it's like I think two thirty is your max now. I think because I think we hit two hundred recently. And then there was only one week maybe in between well, that. I remember specifically we hit 195 and I said, if you hit 295, I'll pay the rest. And then we got one. So it should be at 
215. 215, right. And then so 235. 235. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we'll talk more about that later in regards to uh, Nick and his beloved future Switch and all that stuff. All right. So we have a topic of the show. This just happened overnight, and a lot yeah. of people are probably going to be covering it. However, I felt like it was something we should uh, give attention to, and yeah. that is the talk about Telltale Games. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, I'm sorry, before uh, we actually go into this, uh, I went to a networking event the other day where I met people from Bandai Namco and EA Games. Ooh, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. Um, Talk about it. So I met uh, a lady from Bandai Namco. She'd only been working there as a game designer for about nine months. And I, I didn't really use it as a chance to be like, hey, I play video games. I'm a content creator. You should, We should work together. No, I just wanted to find out because there's really not... And I talked about this when I went for the XDS Summit, the External Developers Summit as well, that there's not enough representation of people who actually work in the industry. Um, and so I was just asking, like, r- literally all I did for, like, the 30 minutes we talked was, tell me about what you do, right? Yep. And what you guys do here. So they're a small studio, and they work exclusively here based in Vancouver, and they work exclusively on... Um, uh, what do you call it? Tech and mobile. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I was right. just asking her about, you know, what the work cycle is like and what do you have to do, you know, how, what's kind of like the process when you're pushing out content updates, stuff like that. And then my final question, which I really didn't think of until the end, was what kind of work ethics do they impose on you from like Japan, from the Japanese headquarters? Yeah. And I can't remember too much, but she's like, it's, it's kind of strict, but it makes things work, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's just, um, very interesting, and, I, and I'm sure this is the same for any kind of like large corporation that has you know bases internationally. But it's interesting to see how much of a um, effect that uh, the the home office has on their you know Vancouver based office, but still allows them enough freedom where they can kind of do their own thing. Mm-hmm. But they, there are still like really clear strict expectations, and that strict um, like that that amazing Japanese work ethic comes through through all their meetings. And she was talking about how. All of their meetings take forever because um, they'll have, you know, the Japanese people and then there'll be them. And so they have translators just yeah. constantly going back and forth. Um, so that yeah. was interesting. Then Something I met... to remember, too, is just in general that, like, whenever we're talking about video game industry, uh, Nintendo of America, Sony of America, you know, Sega of America, Bandai Namco Entertainment US, all of them are beholden to their home offices. So they are not independent. They're not completely independent. They all answer to the big boy back home. Yeah. So that's something to keep in mind in terms of when you do see weird stuff and it's like, huh, somebody operating in North America should know this or know better than this. Sometimes it's a Japanese decision. Yeah. Um, and then I met a guy from who works at EA. EA has a really big studio here in Vancouver. And really? this is, uh, and this is all I'm going to say. Um, he's a, he was a developer. He's a developer. Um, he probably has no yeah, little yeah. to no say about stakeholder decisions, and so he was really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I might actually get a chance to uh, visit the studio, uh, oh. do a little bit of a walkabout, and talk uh, with a few people. But um, he works on the Ultimate Team, uh, FIFA Ultimate Team, um, um, but more so like the visuals, the animations, oh. the design yeah, stuff. That's that's um, exactly. If we're gonna talk honestly, EA games developers are never responsible for anything. It's generally the publishers. Got to say that right now. But uh, that's probably the worst place you want to yeah. be. Yeah, yeah. No, it was easy. controversy he's, in the he middle. He started talking about yeah. the kind of hate mail he receives, mm-hmm. and I feel bad for him. Why did oh, you yeah. kill Dead Space, man? Just anything. Well, because you have to keep in mind, too, the the ultimate team, the ultimate team is, I think, exactly what people are worried about in Europe regarding loot boxes and straight starting criminal investigations about. So Um, he's right there. But he but he does specifically like the 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 mechanics of ultimate team. Um, and he was telling me about some of the kind of hate mail that he received and not exclusively from like the FIFA fan base. Mm-hmm. It carries over from the Battlefront fan base yeah. as well so, uh, when that fiasco happened. Oh, yeah. um, so uh, otherwise, it was a really it was really it was really fun to talk about because FIFA has such a big place in the Middle East. And so we were talking about that, how I grew up with it. Well, not grew up. I started playing FIFA only in about 2010, but still how it has a surprising surprisingly big space how it's growing in north america slowly but steadily kind of growing 
Um, and then we talked about how there was a FIFA tournament at Guardian Con. I was talking about Guardian Con, um, how I met one of the bigger YouTube FIFA YouTubers. And it was just a fun conversation overall. Overall, And uh, yeah, no, that's that's all I had to say. Yeah. I actually have one too, since I totally forgot about it, but we're talking about this. Uh, next weekend, I actually got press passes with some of my friends through into the video game to go hit up Boston FIG Fest, which is an indie game festival in Boston. So I'm going to be covering that next weekend. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I'm still stuck on the idea of, uh, because I I know I kind of joked about Dead Space there for a second. Uh, For those who don't know, Dead Space was developed by Visceral Games, uh, owned by EA, got dissolved after Dead Space 3 after a while, and uh, got uh, assimilated into EA Vancouver as well as uh, EA Montreal. So I wonder, because there was like, I would say 80 to 100 people in Visceral, how many of those people went to uh, Vancouver? And whether or not, uh, you know, they're still there. I like how big do you think EA Vancouver is? I actually have no idea, and I didn't ask him about it, but it is one of the larger ones here. I know the Coalition has um, 150 or 200 people, and I think it's a, prob- EA is probably around that number here. <laughs> yeah, okay. Fair enough, fair enough. So uh, let's talk again a little bit, put the focus back towards Telltale. Because speaking of uh, companies and uh, developers that got... <sighs> falling apart, taken down, and making their announcements, laying people off. Uh, Telltale is uh, officially been announced to uh, that it's it's closing. Telltale Games is uh, closing down. And uh, there's been talks of uh, as small as 90 people to as much as 180 people have been uh, laid off. They're now uh, jobless and they need to find a job. And uh, there's only 25 people left there. People thought originally it was for to work on one of the games that's currently in progress, but in fact it was for the Minecraft Story Mode project for Netflix. <laughs> so any game that you were hoping to come out uh, through Telltale Games, uh, i.e. the rest of the final Walking Dead season Telltale Games, and uh, other games such as Stranger Things and the... Uh, sorry, well, Stranger Things, isn't that a, a Netflix show? Is that it a is. game? They announced they were working on a game for it, but that's now canceled. Mm. Yeah, but they're also, I know somebody is finishing Walking Dead because originally they thought the 25 Skeleton Crew was going to finish Walking Dead last season since they're on the final season. But I think it might be outsourced now, but somebody's finishing last, um, the Walking Dead. I did hear that. Okay. I mean, yeah. good for them, I suppose. It's just, this was sudden for me. I, I, I saw a random tweet yesterday about somebody saying, hey, just so you know, if uh, if you need a uh, an environmental artist, uh, I'm your person because I just got laid off. I'm like, oh, that sucks. You know, that Sorry, laid, off, laid, off is, uh, laid off is a nice way of putting it. Um, it was closer to 200 people that just got the axe without any severance. So yep. it was actually like really, really crappy on um, Telltale's part. But uh, this is probably not uncommon in the industry where people are forced to work overtime to meet uh, deadlines and to push games out. But there's no actual contract say, saying or like there's no actual protection that they'll actually get paid the money that they owe. Yep. And without any kind of unionization, they didn't actually have a chance. They don't actually have a chance. There's a lot of people who are not going to get the severance that they deserve, who are actually, you know, have families and they're going to struggle to make ends meet because this is also the Bay Area and San Francisco. Yep. So rent is very high, no jobs, no income. And now they're all scr- uh, scrambling to find jobs. So they're all probably going to have to relocate. So don't work overtime, and, folks, unless you're getting paid for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no kidding. Jeez, okay. And if they threaten to fire you, it's probably better in the long run because things like this will happen. Mm, yeah, no, definitely. And, you know, I heard, I've heard about the stories for a while. I think I did a report maybe a year ago on some troubles they were having, financial troubles with Telltale. But I did hear the crunch was very severe there, that micromanagement was there very severe. And it overall was not a good work environment, uh, just in general. So Over at TTG? Yeah, over at Telltale. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's, I mean, I mean, you, you hear. Can, you can sort of see. You can't really see it. You can somewhat see it if you really look. Like if you hear that news, then you can look at the games and put it together. Because the realistic scenario with the games is, even from the first Walking Dead, they really never worked on their engine. They never really fixed a lot of the issues. They kind of just pumped out games. Like they pumped out oh, games, yeah. they pumped out stories, but they didn't fix many of the issues intrinsic with their model of game, which was you know innovative at the time and very interesting. But they didn't move past that. And it seems like there was a lot of micromanagement and overtime and crunch work getting paid. People were strung out and the overall it's not a good environment. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so just to clarify, here's some numbers. Uh, 250, 250 people have been laid off. Uh, nobody got any kind of severance. Their health care will only last for another week. Oh. Um, employees were on contract and they can't qualify for unemployment. Yeah. Um, 
because they weren't okay. technically direct employees. Of I the know game. about that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. If you're on contract, unless you pay into the state, um, what's it called, unemployment fund uh, separately, you don't get unemployment because I'm a contract worker. So, yeah. Ooh. So that's what's happening with Telltale right now. 250 people um, got the X. A lot of them, even uh, some of them, even joined as early as a week ago. Mm. Wow. Yep. Yeah. No. That that's is... that's um. Oh, is it has it been an hour? Uh, yeah, that's real shitty. That's real fucking shitty. <laughs> and it just kind of reminds me of the uh, we talked about the Blazinski situation a while back where the similar thing happened where people weren't told and they were fired on the spot, basically. And that same sort of thing where it's like, as a company, it's also your duty to know when you're about to go under, uh, yeah. let people prepare. And even to some extent, I know in Japan they do this, but uh, there's a social obligation of some sort to help people find new jobs in Japan. It's, it's morality yeah. and ethics as well. Why would you hire somebody? With and a week, knowing yeah. that you could like run out of money in a week. Like, I don't know. That's as, uh, that's uh, as a person who's you know talking about this 55 minutes in, this is horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's all right. It's all right. Who cares? Um, <laughs> no, because uh, like you also have to think about it, uh, like putting aside the video games from and like the ethics and morality of like what's happening here is something else and i'm a lot of people feel like they have to work overtime at a new ish job <laughs> because otherwise they feel like that's the only way they could survive or keep their job but you everybody's well within their rights to sell yeah. themselves on how much they think they're worth and work as long as they think they're going to get paid for right now i understand this is all situational and this is me speaking from the point of view of never actually having worked like a proper job but you know if, if you have to make ends meet so on and so on but unless they can especially in today's day uh, like the way the world is today if they can't guarantee you that they can't they're not going to pay you overtime yeah. or that they can't pay you overtime don't do it yep right? well they it's honestly start. yeah away from the video game world i am in that space right now and a lot of my friends are starting out in you know their office jobs because a lot of people did tech and that sort of thing and uh, i constantly am telling them like not to work overtime and that sort of thing because at the current situation we're in it's funny enough that sometimes it's worse off to be salaried sometimes as i joke with them because the second somebody gets salaried they don't get paid like the overtime specifically because they're on a salary and right. then we'll start asking them to come in six days a week and I've seen that happen a couple of times and just been like, no, just, just say yeah, no, don't do that. Yeah. Base it off of like 40, 50 hours and yeah. suddenly they get slammed to 70 and it's like no they expected to because you're the boss technically that <laughs> yeah. you're being told yeah. what to do. Yeah, yeah right. I'm not saying don't work Try hard. Me. Yeah. If it's, if it's if you're in a startup and you're really passionate about it, then then the context like, changes. We're talking about specific, yeah. specific situations. But here in a situation like this where um, the uh, the... Uh, publishing company or the stakeholders have placed such strict deadlines that you know you can't meet, but you have to meet anyway, so you're forced to work overtime. Mm -hmm. uh, they can do something to themselves that I can't say for another three minutes, I'm guessing. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> I agree. No. Completely. Oh, no, we're free range, yeah. Nick. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> they can go fuck themselves, really. No, honestly, and I think, I think it's beyond any sort of... I don't even think it's too political to say it, but I don't think there's really any politics tied up in the fact that you should get paid for your work. Like, yeah. I think that's that's pretty apolitical, I feel. Like, and you know, there's circumstances notwithstanding, of course, volunteer work, all that stuff, but it's pretty universal to say, yep, if you work a certain hours and you're promised a certain pay, you should get that. You yeah. should probably get that. I 100% agree with that. They're like, uh, this is me talking about a previous job. I know I don't want to be hired back by them, but uh, as a truck driver who gets paid by the miles and I'm used to doing, let's say, a 500-mile trip, you know, as long as I'm driving, I get paid. Yeah. But suddenly they tell me I got to pick up a backhaul that's going to take three and a half hours that I got to be awake for. Well, if I'm backing up to a dock and I got to sit there for three and a half hours while they think things through, I'm not getting paid for that. Mm -hmm. I'm doing extra work for free. So anytime they told me I had to do a backhaul, it was just infuriating. It's like, why? I'm not getting paid for this. Yep. What, I'm going to get, what, $15 for the stop if I'm lucky? And then yeah. they hit you with that. Is this really about the money? Like, fuck yeah, it's about the money. Yeah. No, it's also about my time. Like, realistically, if they let me screw yeah. off and play my Vita for three hours, sure, fine. But if they don't and they want me to be attentive and actually work during that period of time, pay me. Pay me. Okay, I mean, I agree. I to clock in, clock out. I don't do any work outside of work. To be fair, I use that time to become a Let's Player in the back of my truck. So. Oh, okay. You know, I uh, did a lot of recording on my computer, so, you know, I made it work. I mm -hmm. wasn't too upset, but I was still upset because it's like I could actually be making money and, you know, getting out of my life, not pretending that this is okay. And nowadays, since I'm paid by the hour and I, whenever I do backhauls, I just sit there and play Persona 4 Golden. Sounds and get optimal. paid for it. So, yeah. Yep, sounds yeah. optimal to me. <laughs> so, um, so just to like sort of reel it back in from all of the ethics and the moralities, um, any any speculation as to 
why why they failed like putting aside like maybe marketing and all of these other reasons is it just a sign towards like these kinds of games not doing well i you know i do think that that visual novels they are semi visual novels they're somewhat adventure games as well but visual no- novels are not a large audience uh, they're usually made on a shoestring budget these were a little bit larger budget and when it happened the first couple times it was very big right but it was sure. very clear early on that telltale started to have to rely on big ips like minecraft like uh, you know you know, Wolf, I'll say this: Wolf Among Us and Walking Dead were, I think, their heyday, of course. But when they started having to rely on Batman, starting having to rely on Minecraft, Stranger Things, and all these other things, Borderlands, for example, they're really just kind of latching onto a series that aren't the same type of gameplay as those series themselves. And people do care about gameplay, even though we talk right, so much right. about plot. And I don't think there's much of a market for it. For one. And also, I think just in terms of pure advertising, uh, I definitely don't think they, they, not that they did enough because it is video games. I don't like to see inflated advertising budgets, but considering what they're working with, they could have afforded more. So for example, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Why not have a preview for that game in your movie showing? Right? No, I don't have a promo for it during the movie or something like that. Do you um, really want to though? It's like- I do. But I think that would be optimal for them. Check out all these save glitches. <laughs> but like, yeah, I think it was partly, yeah, they didn't have a market. They didn't innovate after making their their big breakthrough with Walking Dead. And uh, clearly it was not a good corporate culture as well. And also, I'm not going to lie. I it, These kinds of games never had my interest. But a big part of the reason why these particular line of games, uh, like the Telltale games, was purely the art style. Mm-hmm. It was the same kind of reused art style for everything. And I... That really struck me as lazy. Yep. No, um, like, like ooh, I did say, they didn't. Statement. No, Trash no, I'm talking about a company that's dead because if, now. No, I because if they're gonna, if they're gonna do like you know, partner with the bigger brands or rely on these bigger IPs, they could at least kept the art style somewhat similar to create like a stronger visual language and show that this this is related to this game in some way. But here we have this very, it was like the very borderlines, like comic-y outline for every single one of their games. Yeah, yeah, because they were just really. That's what I said. They they were really just reusing their engine. Uh, um, reusing the not not their assets necessarily, but the basis for some of that, and uh, didn't really innovate, and uh, that was one part of it. But I do think it was also definitely a market part of it, where I don't think there were for I don't know what their budgets looked like in terms of how exactly down to the number big they were. Minimal, but geared. visual novels are very very small budgets generally. Yeah, and also I don't mean to like audience. trash talk the uh, art directors and developers. I'm sure that they wanted to do what they wanted of to course. do as well. They always do. They're people of their profession, and I'm sure they wanted to make a Batman Telltale game that looked like a Batman game. Mm-hmm. But then here they were like the the businessman who knows nothing I mean, about video games, yeah. like this is what's gonna work because it worked the first three times, so we're gonna make it work the next six times. Yep, yep. No, it's dangerous, dangerous game. Publishers, just in general, right? Uh, an evil necessity, I would say. <laughs> and much as I do want to criticize, and it's perfectly understandable, the uh, the top dogs of the company, I do want to, from an emotional standpoint, send out my uh, heartfelt sympathies to the hundreds of people that did lose their jobs yes. for that. Because yes. much as we you know can explain why uh, the big guys did wrong, it's not the big guys that are losing out in the end. Oh. It's it's these you know hundreds. There is there people. is a list out there of um, uh, video game developers that have job op- openings somewhere out on Twitter. So uh, you know. Like yes, I believe it was like hashtag uh, TTG developers yeah. or something yeah. like that. What I would say is exactly that, actually, is that the video game industry so far recently has been very good at picking up talent when studios go under. Um, they like to stay in, like, inclusive within themselves in that way. Uh, we saw that when, you know, Cliff Blazinski's Endeavor went down with Bosky and all that stuff. Uh, they picked up a lot of the, uh, different people, like a lot went back to Epic Games, a lot moved around. But uh, hopefully these people all get picked up. So Same. Uh, I think that's going to wrap it up for now. Uh, there's been updates here and there, but we've pretty much covered it all. And quite frankly, I don't know what else uh, that can be said unless there's like an emergency merger that could happen or something like that. But uh, yeah. at this point, uh, I don't know if IPs can be picked up at this point. Yeah, like, maybe, but it, it's uh, it's a big old cesspool right now. So I don't know if it can be touched on uh, from a legal standpoint. Bungie's looking for six art people for their team and four engineers. One game go. designer, one audio person, one IT guy, and six business operation people. Go to I Bungle. wonder what for. Go to Bungle. <laughs> oh, well, actually, well, we, we talked about this months ago. They partnered with, uh, they got a cash infusion infusion from, uh, was it Tencent? Or a different Chinese gaming company? For about I have no idea. Dollars. I thought we said it was different. 
because I thought we said it wasn't Tencent because we were worried it was Tencent. Not Tencent. It was another company. I can't remember. Yeah, the NetEase company. or something like something that. Something like maybe. that, but $100 yeah. million dollars to work on a new IP, so. Mm. Right, right. Was that NetEase? I think that was NetEase. Hold on. Might be NetEase, yeah. yeah. Yep, it was NetEase. Bungie gets a $100 million investment from Chinese gaming company NetEase. Yeah. yeah. Bless them. Right. Awesome. Right. Hopefully that doesn't go towards uh, Forsaken. <laughs> Certainly not, right? No. <laughs> Those no, fun, making it new I, wouldn't, with that. I wouldn't be upset. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. for me, for uh, I do have a question I want to put up for you guys. Uh, just I, I know we talked a lot about Destiny 2. I just want a couple yeah. less questions. Uh, this one's first one is towards uh, Cam. Cam, uh, when you're downloading that Tuesday patch, does it take two minutes for you to download and two hours to install, or is that yep. just okay? So copying, that is copying, copying. So uh, I don't know if uh, you can do that with well, uh, PS Plus in sleep mode, and that just chugs it on through. But that is a nightmare. Like yeah, and funny enough, like actually, movie, but yeah, funny enough, I actually hit. I logged back in right directly after the restart, and I saw some weird stuff, dude. It oh, logged man. me in, and all my weeklies were gone except for a flashpoint on Titan, which is not this week's flashpoint. And there were treasure maps, Titan treasure maps, strewn around. Ooh. I, I like. I logged out immediately because I was Welcome like, no, I want my back weeklies. To the war mine. Yeah. But I saw some stuff while I was in there during the reset. I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> what's this?" Super yeah, secret. It took forever. And the uh, the final question I have: uh, dance moves from uh, Tess Everest. I have not seen a new dance move appear in her store. How often does that change, Nick? In Cam, I'm pretty sure it refreshes weekly. Whatever her stock is, I've um, got. I've been like, I got it. The uh, you know the dab dance. Yeah, and it's been in that store. It's, you know, for the past couple of weeks, I'm waiting for the change, and it has not changed for me yet. And I'm how much does it cost? It. Uh, I think a thousand, like eight hundred or eight hundred thousand bright dust. Oh, yeah, I can do that. And also, yeah. I just learned this: uh, if you don't like all your ghost shells, you can cash those in for uh, the bright dust. So I yeah, sparrows, mm-hmm. um, oh, ships. sparrows too. Okay, yeah, sparrows, yep. ships, um, any Jackson. shader that you get from uh, Eververse can also be dismantled for um, bright dust. Yep, and some for shards. And then if you do the bounties, yeah. so the legendary ones that you get through normal gameplay is for shards, but then the legendary ones that come from Eververse are for Bright Dust. Um, any bounties that you can pick up from Tess, they give you Bright Dust. Yeah. And so I get all those Bright Dust, but no dance moves to buy, and it's upsetting. It's like, why won't you change Well, from mind you, though, the, we're only at the start of Season 4, and I got all the emos from Season 3 just by playing the game normally. I didn't buy yeah. a single one from uh, Tess. So just give it a few weeks, and you'll eventually have all of them. Sweet. I mean, if she wants to switch it sometime, I'd be happy. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I would love to have a chance. I don't like, I know, I think it's like a, the lottery chance for the holding the rooster thing, the super rare, legendary, right, exotic, right, the emote. exotic one. Yeah, I am. But I just, I just, I wanted the new dance because I was sick of this weird slow dance, like I'm very moving. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I went from that to like full meme monster to like, <laughs> and that's like, it's funny, but I just want, you know, like, Give me a tap dance or something. I need that dance. <laughs> what, the dab dance? Yeah, I need it. Oh, it's funny. That's a, that's a dance that came back from uh, D1. Good, I need it. <laughs> that's right. I think it's called the old school dance or something yeah. like that. Bringing back the old school. All right. I think that's it. Let's uh, let's uh, let's talk about the game releases coming out this week. Because there's a couple of good hitters. A couple of uh, uh, hitters, I guess you could say. Uh, first one is coming out on September 25th. Uh, let's see. That is actually what day of the week? That Tuesday, is I'm a sure. Tuesday. Yep. So for those listening to the podcast, that's going to be out tomorrow. Uh, for that, it is Valkyria Chronicles 4. Yeah. Yes. Generally, or- just so everybody knows, generally game releases are Tuesday, Friday. Uh, there's not many games that break that trend. So. All right. All right. And uh, that's PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Switch. Mm-hmm. So important question: What's the uh, best uh, console to get this on? Um, for me, I tell probably, myself PS4. I mean, personally, I'd say Switch because it's portable. That's yes. usually my go-to. But I'm just um, worried about like uh, power limitations. I yeah. mean, the Volcano Chronicles doesn't seem too crazy, but I feel like uh, I, I like I don't know about FPS because as I'm constantly reminded, if I play anything that's on PS4 or any other console and the PC. I should be immediately FPS shamed for enjoying the game that I'm playing. Yes. By, uh, as you know, required. Let's see, coming out, coming out, and I say this in quotations, Mark, I'm assuming it is, The Walking Dead, the final season, episode two, by <laughs> Telltale T- Games, oh. is coming out on the uh, same stuff, uh, PlayStation, Xbox, PC, and Switch, also on Tuesday. <laughs> is it, though? <laughs> is it, though? And it, it feels like it's going to give it like a completely different feeling to it. It's like, this could be it, possibly. Yeah, and also definitely if they do, if they do finish it 
however they do that, it will definitely feel rushed. I'm sure. Like there'll definitely be something in there that's like, ooh, that was that was a quick wrap up, wasn't it? Yikes! It's like oh, I'm an important character for at least two more episodes. Oh, yeah. he's dead. That's yep, awkward. Yep, yep. Jeez. See, coming out on the 27th, I got two games for you. Life is Strange 2, Episode 1. So uh, Square Enix, I believe it is, uh, is finally going to be working on Episode 1. We got, well, they already worked on it, I hope. It's uh, going to be coming out soon this week for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. No Switch this time. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. And also Towerfall, who uh, decided to say screw it to every other console and came up for the Switch. There but I, I believe that is a Steam the Switch kind of game. So take that for it, we will. Uh, the 28th, uh, we also have two games. Uh, one, which I'm very hesitant to announce because I strongly recommend against it, Dragon Ball Fighter Z coming out for the Switch. Oh, would you recommend against it because of the frame rate? I uh, More for the server lag. Oh, but yeah. Also yeah. the frame rate. Uh, I mean, I recommend playing it. But play it on the PC or the PS4. Uh, I will say this. All I'll say about the Switch version is that if you pre-order it, you get Super Butoden, which was a SNES game, um, a Dragon Ball Z SNES game. And that's the only way to get that. Right. We or a Super that Famicom game. But from, that's the only uh, way to get that. From a financial standpoint, that it was a great deal. Yep. Uh, it's just uh, with the test uh, beta that they did for it that weekend, it was atrocious. Like worse than yeah, oh, uh, yeah. Mario Tennis Aces. So... I mean, if you want to make that jump, you want to make that risk, go right ahead. Just uh, you've been forewarned. There's a possibility you might be upset, but yep. who knows? Just also know that if you do want Super Butoden on Switch, this is literally the only way to do it. You can't buy it separately. So get that if you want to do that. Pressure all the way from both directions. Don't do it. You should do it if you want this because <laughs> there's no other way. No other way. FIFA 19 coming out <laughs> on a lot. Uh, PS4. Yeah. PS3, Xbox mm. One, Xbox mm. 360, Switch, not the Wii U, cough, what? and PC. No Vita either, huh? That's weird. Also no, coming on the 28th. You know what else is weird? Hold on. Let me check something about this because I know you said not the Wii U, but if I'm reading correctly. Uh-oh. What's coming some- up for the Wii U? No, something something came out on the Wii. Something oh, the Wii. is coming yes. out on the Wii. You still are recently. right. Skip the Wii U, but went for the Wii. I don't remember what game came up. <laughs> Yeah, it no. went that far, <laughs> something. I, I think it was recent though. I thought it was FIFA 19, but it's something coming out. Is coming out How on the Wii. How did it come off FIFA? Yep, the Wii. I, yep, yep. I think is because it was something recently. Some sports game recently is coming out on the Wii, but skipping the Wii U. Uh, I feel like just, it was it, a basketball game. Does, Man, are we about to get the uh, Mandela effect here? Jeez. Yeah, but no, that does still happen because the Wii is just you know there's so many out there. That's the PS2 of this generation or last generation where it's like they just they're gonna put it out. Might as well, so. Yeah, somebody, yeah. everybody has a Wii, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't have a Wii. I oh. never owned a Wii. Yeah, I mean, I had a Wii. Never. I gave it to my sister because the Wii U can play Wii games, so you know yes. I was happy with that. But that also means now that since my GameCube's backed away, I can't play GameCube games. Oh, well. I mean, I can <laughs> through other means, but, you know, whatever. I have, uh, I got three GameCubes. I got two Wiis and a Wii U. Are you, like, are you, are you trying I'm to nurture you, them? I'm, are you I'm, a foster I'm, home? I'm like, protecting them. sitting on, like, 800 PS Vitas <laughs> in a hidden, wrong, in, in a, storage, a storage unit somewhere in, like, Maryland. He's and not he's wrong. Just waiting, he's just waiting to take over Sony one day. <laughs> And he wouldn't change anything. He just he just take over and he would just be sitting there. Well, no, but, I would, no, no. The one thing he would change was he'd yeah. make sure the PS Vita two came out. Yes. Um, but he wouldn't like change anything other than that. Well, he'd probably direct all capital, all all resources <laughs> towards the PS Vita, and then the it's PlayStation true. would just die. It's and true. Everything on the PS VR would die. No, there'd be the PS Vita VR. Yeah, yeah. And then oh, I'd single handedly <laughs> think so with my decisions. Cameron, the man that convinced Rhode Island to believe in video games again. No, guys, shut down your, <laughs> shut down your TV division. We don't need them. More money to the Vita. <laughs> shut down the cameras. We don't need them. <laughs> oh, my gosh. MP3 oh my players, gosh. throw them out. Computers, throw them out. Well, you don't have computers anymore, but just get rid of all of it. I don't care if you have smart fridges. Fuck it and put it to the Vita. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> hey, no, I can't <laughs> handle you. <laughs> In before, uh, you can start playing the PS Vita OG games on your Tesla, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cam would a hundred percent do a I port. port. I would port not Vita games, but the Vita to multiple <laughs> systems. Tesla has like an indentation on the dashboard oh where you can insert goodness. the Vita, make it yeah. relevant. <laughs> yeah. Vita for smart fridge. Vita for smart toaster. Vita for everything. <laughs> That's where Sony screwed up, man. Yeah, uh, it is. It is realistically. So. Oh man, that'd be funny. Yep. That'd be great. <laughs> Uh, wrap up plugs housekeepings uh casual master quest can be found on twitter 
at MasterQuestPod, and you can email us at CasualMasterQuest at gmail.com. You can find myself on Twitter at Two Times Tyler, all letters, one word, uh, as naturally, you know, I, I believe that's how it works. I can't, I don't think you can put spaces. You can only not, put underscores. Not that I know of, but yeah, only underscores or high. And you can find me at twitch.tv at Two Times Tyler, same word, same name. Uh, I, I stream on Tuesdays and Fridays, 6 to 9 p.m. Uh, I usually do Zelda games, but until I get a nunchuck that uh, doesn't like explode upon use, uh, yeah, I might have to play something else. I might have to play a, a horror game or something. We'll see. We'll see. Nick, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at LRWarrior11. You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash LRWarrior11. Um, I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Um, I don't remember what my times are because I have them programmed in my calendar, but... Uh, check out my twitter that's where i have uh, my schedule posted all times are in pacific standard time um if you've heard of amazon prime please stop by thank you <laughs> <laughs> have you heard of uh this website called uh twitch.tv <laughs> oh man your partner was happy to remind you of that every five minutes man jeez <laughs> And Cam, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Cam Collects, my preferred social media. You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Cam Collects. I stream Monday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's Pokemon White 2, Randomized Nuzlocke. And then Fridays at 6 p.m. EST for Pokemon Prism, where just yesterday half my team wiped. So it was it was grievous. It was, it was the worst. I lost two of my favorite Pokemon, probably from any Nuzlocke ever. So it was actually wait wait, 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 wait. Which one is Infernape on? Infernape's Infernape's okay. Okay, Ooh, that's, all, that's all I care about. He's on white too. He's okay. Infernape is okay. But I lost a Crobat and an Agron. But anyway, and also of course, if you want to hear my other podcast that I produce, you can find that at IntoTheVideoGame.com. Of course. Okay. And, of course, Cam, uh, you do want to make an announcement, I'm sure. Uh, yes. Go ahead. So, unfortunately, what happened is because the Vita has ended production, I can no longer stay tied to this material realm. Um, unfortunately, my life force is tied to it, much like a Horcrux. Uh, so, now the Vita's ended production, I have to disappear and die. And uh, that's it's unfortunate, and it's all because you didn't buy a Vita. Um, it's, ever, it's all your faults. It's all your faults entirely, and now my life force will be snuffed out. Uh, so that's what I have to say. But uh, no, real talk is that I do have to leave Casual Master Quest at least for the the episodes every week. I will still be a part of the team as we discussed and come on every once in a while. But uh, time constraint wise, I'm finding I don't have enough time to even play the games after review or even play the games I want to. And you know, workouts are suffering, that sort of thing suffering. So I'm cutting down a few things. Casual Master Quest unfortunately has to be one of them. Uh, so this is my last episode as a weekly member of the show. And past that, I will show up sporadically. He will Excuse hopefully me. be our Wii U and Vita correspondent yep. <laughs> uh, whenever the word gets. Like, he has a Google search yeah, thing back. where anytime he gets popped up in the internet, yep. he'll be there. <laughs> anytime the Vita's mentioned, I get to cling one more. I'll come down. I'll come down. I'll cling a little to the life. Just, like, I'm back. Ugh. Like, the only way we're going to be able to bring him back, it, it has a cooldown of, like, once every couple of months. We have to yeah. say Vita three times fast. <laughs> and then, then I'll show up for a little Vita, bit. Vita, Vita. It's, it's, a, it's a Goku situation. <laughs> it's not it's not down. Yeah, it's a Goku situation where, you know, I can come back down for, like, uh, you know, one, one day, one episode at a time. But, you know, when you chant the Vita enough, I will come back. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Nick and I will uh, we will forge on. Uh, we uh, we want to also make a couple of announcements right here and now. We'll give you more details later. Uh, be in episode twenty. This is going to be the end of what we're going to call season one. Ooh, I didn't uh, know this. We are going to uh, rebrand everything in a different format and whatnot. We are going to take one week off. I believe next weekend we are going to give a uh, podcast episode kind of explain what we're going to do, what we're going to change, what we're going to add, what we're going to take away, what we're going to miss. Uh, it starts with a V and ends with Ida. Mm. And uh, we're going to take it from there. And then season two will begin two weeks from now. And then uh, we'll see what wild things will happen with us there. So uh, stay tuned for that. And of course, uh, later this week, uh, we have the casual interview of Tyler coming out myself. So uh, look forward to that as uh, something to uh, you know boost uh, your attention while we're gone. And uh, with that, I think that's going to be it for uh, the end of this episode. Is there anything else that we want to say before we take it away? Um, this isn't even our final form. Please buy the Vita. Yeah, uh, we are not a hundred percent final form freezer yet. No, uh, Cam. You know what? I, I, I think, and this would be an honor with uh, to me. Would you mind taking us off? Sure. What exactly do you want me to say? Just the usual, or just a 
You uh, can one more say time. whatever you want. I don't even care anymore. All Just right, all right. Give your, give your special sauce, man. Well, thank you guys all for coming and stopping by and checking us out. You know where to find us on all the things we showed earlier. With that all being said, love you guys, and uh, we'll see these two fabulous people next time. I love you, too. Love you. Bye-bye. Yeah, I'll see you guys uh, in a couple of weeks. See you soon. Uh, oh, God, he's evaporating. No! Oh, God!